Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Stacey. And this is the Body Smart Podcast. And today we are talking all things weight loss medication. Yes, this is a very big topic right now. It is. You might have heard of various names, brand names being chucked around. Yes, so Ozempic and Wagovi are brand names, but the chemical in those medications is semaglutide. Yeah, um, and there's also other various ones um, like Saxenda, which is a different active ingredient that's got liraglutide in there. Um, but they all kind of use the same techniques, I guess, um, in that they suppress the hunger sensations that you get. So they suppress yeah. your appetite. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them also like slow down digestion as well. So there's lots of research to show they work. Yes. But just because they work, does that mean you should do it? It doesn't mean that you should do it because there can be like unintended consequences of this, whether that's short-term issues or short-term side effects and then also like long-term ones. Um, I'm concerned about both, to be yeah. honest, with a lot of people. It's, you know, especially for someone who struggled with their weight for their whole lives, this miracle weight loss medication coming along and being the answer to all your problems feels like, oh, this is, this, this sounds great. And then, you know, you try it and it works. And then it's all of a sudden like, oh my God, nothing has ever worked. And now this is working for me. But then the longer term questions around this is like, well, what happens when you come off? Because, exactly. Because it's not a lifelong, well, it shouldn't be a lifelong solution. However, you were telling me yesterday that. Yeah, no, the the um, manufacturers actually do say once you start these drugs, like that's pretty much you on them for life. Um, so I think we should probably discuss like, how does it work? What are the results you can expect? And then people can kind of make their own decisions yeah. around whether that would be something they would want to continue because the results do sound quite impressive. So from the research trials, there's been many and like the average amount that people lose is 15 pounds within three months and 27 pounds within six months. So that's for the average participant in these studies is like 10% of their body weight in six months. Yeah. And if you think about a lot of health risk factors, a lot of the time you'll be told if you lose 10%, your risk factor will reduce by this much. Mm -hmm. um, so there's an easy correlation there to think, well, actually this is a very active step I can take to improve my health. Yeah. Just FYI, by the way, one of our markets with our clients is that they lose 10% of body weight in three months. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just there. Uh, just need to put that in there <laughs> without the weight loss medication. But yeah, like there is, there's a lot of benefits. And I think people who have been overweight or overweight their whole lives get fed up of going to the doctors and just being told, well, your symptoms or side effects are because you need to lose weight. And it can, it can feel not great. And to see something like this deliver results like that. Um, and it's just like, Hey, like, what have I, what have I got to do? Um, it's basically like, Oh, I inject this medication. I won't feel as hungry and I lose weight. Like, Especially because it tackles like the five of the top 10 biggest struggles when it comes to weight loss. Um, so those are maintaining willpower, lack of motivation, eating healthy foods, overcoming hunger, and just the pure difficulty of losing weight. Yeah. So if you can take something and it just makes all of those disappear mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like a no-brainer yeah it does seem like a no-brainer it's so there's a um and si will please fact check me on this there's something called the snake paradox is it mm. cobra. the cobra paradox so the cobra paradox was basically there was an issue with cobras in india was it and what the government, I think it was even the British government, put out saying like, hey, because um, there's an issue with cobras, we'll give you a couple of hundred dollars for every cobra head that you bring back. Um, and that was like, oh, this is going to help the public, you know, get rid of these uh, cobras because they're going to bring cobra heads in and, and get the money. But then people realized that and started breeding cobras. <laughs> so literally started breeding cobras because we were like, oh, we'll breed cobras and then we'll give the heads in and we'll get more money. Um, and then the government eventually got onto that. So they stopped it. But then there was actually like two or three times as many cobras now out than there was previously. So this is something that in in the immediate scene, like, oh, this is a great idea. We're going to reduce the amount of cobras, but had unintended consequences later down the line. And I think this can be like very true with like weight loss medications. Yeah, it might help you lose 10% body fat or it might help you lose weight. But what are the unintended long, you know, short, medium and long term consequences. And there is a lot to consider here. Like, do you want to be on a, med a medication for the rest of your life? Especially one that costs over a thousand dollars a pop. Yeah, it's not uh, cheap. So that's a month. That's a month. Forever. Uh, forever. And even if you have insurance, if you're in the US, I think it doesn't always cover the full amount. So there's often yep. a top up. So even if the majority is covered by insurance, you're still going to be paying a monthly fee forever. 
Yeah. And and so that's that's a huge, you know, financial side of it as well. But also just to go on a medication, see results, feel great. Like this is the typical fad yo-yo approach that most people go on. They go on a fad diet, they see results, they feel initially good. It then gets really hard, which maybe might not be the case with the weight loss and, um, medication. But eventually you stop doing said method or said diet go back to maybe some old habits and behaviors and the weight comes back on and you feel horrendous and this is possibly a cycle not possibly it is going to be a cycle that people go on with weight, weight loss medication they go on it they lose weight they come off because they feel like oh this is costing too much money or i'm having side effects or there's a shortage or there's a shortage and then what happens you're like oh i have you have a crutch you've ga- you've given yourself a crutch so the crutch has been taken away the weight comes back on and you're like instantly I need to go back onto the medication. So it's a great business model, but it's horrendous for your physiology, for your psychology. Um, and yeah, it, it just keeps you stuck and going back for more. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, I want to do want to say like, I'm not fully against weight loss medication in, in, because in some cases, if you are morbidly obese, you know, the, the reward outweighs the risk to an extent. Um, because, you know, being say 200 pounds overweight, 250 pounds overweight, getting back down to a healthier weight will just see all, you know, cause mortality go down, we'll see health markers get in a better place. So that can be, can be the case. But when you're seeing like Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian promote it and these other celebrities promote it online or other people like, oh, I just need to lose 15 pounds when I just took Ozempic, like those people and how that's getting pushed around socials. Um, I think we really need to address that though, because it's not actually approved for that use. So first thing, Azempic is not a weight loss medication. It's a diabetes medication. Mm-hmm. It's not approved for weight loss. It's the same chemical or active ingredient that's in Wagovi, which is, um, but it, it shouldn't be used for weight loss, Azempic. Secondly, Wagovi is only actually approved by the FDA in America for use of someone with a BMI over 27 with comorbidities. Yeah. Or over 30. Kim Kardashian. 30, 30 BMI. Yeah, yeah, not age 30. Yeah. So if you only need to lose 15 pounds, you do not meet that criteria. No. So it's not approved for use in those populations. And I think we haven't had this drug around for long enough to know what are the implications of taking it off label. Mm-hmm. Even if the side effects seem minor. So you feel a bit nauseous, you might vomit, you might get diarrhea. I mean, I don't actually think that sounds minor. That sounds like being pregnant constantly, which is horrendous. Um, But if like, that's all we know so far. Mm -hmm. What happens if you do take it for 20 years? And this is it. Like, we just do not know what the the side effects are. And it's like, and there are other ways. And I know people be like, well, what are the other ways I've tried them all? So it feels like this is the, the thing to take. And you know, even human behavior and human psychology is like, you are going to take the path of least resistance. Like that is human behavior. And you are going to look for something that can like, you know, this is why someone can phone up and just be like, oh, just put the credit card down and pay 25 grand for liposuction versus sometimes we might need to fight <clears throat> tooth and nail to someone to, you know, come sign up to coaching because of like, they just like, oh, right. What, what's, what, you know, liposuction going to give me? I'm going to lose 40 pounds of fat. They're going to suck it out of me. It's Overnight. Gonna be, it's going to be done instantly and um, I'm going to be in a bit of pain for two weeks. But that's it. I can guarantee the results. It can be done very fast and I'm in a bit of pain for two weeks. Like that's the effort and sacrifice versus, you know, for a lot of, a lot of other people, that's like, well, I've got to exercise. I've got to you know, make more mindful decisions. I've got to, you know, start to unpick some bad behaviors. There's a lot of work to be done and that puts people off from even starting or if they have started, they haven't been able to see successful. So something like Ozempa comes along and it's like, oh, this is the mm. the thing for me. I think even that's a misconception though, because if you are being prescribed it and it's being like administered in the proper way, it should be a build up over one to two months to find the correct dose. You're not going to see instant results. Yeah. It's not overnight. It's not going to suddenly drop twenty pounds off you. Like those results in the controlled tests were, what was it, ten percent of your body weight over six months? Yeah. It's but, not instant. And a big thing for that as well is what you're typically seeing for people who go on weight loss medication and aren't eating higher protein diets, maybe aren't getting better sleep habits and definitely aren't doing resistance training. They're losing um, a lot of muscle mass and even some bone density as well throughout mm-hmm. that. So you're getting weaker bones, you're increasing the chance of you getting you know osteoporosis, especially if you're older um, and you're losing muscle. And, and muscle is something like you want to fight tooth and nail to keep on. But you're just basically putting yourself in a giant calorie deficit and your body is just using like that. A calorie deficit is controlled starvation in a controlled manner. You're starving your body so it eats itself. That's what's happening. And your body will 
eat fat, eat muscle, eat whatever it can to keep you going. Um, and if you're not getting enough sleep, eating enough protein, doing resistant training, you will lose fat and muscle, which is, let's say somebody loses 10% of their body weight, but it's predominantly from fat versus someone loses 10% of their body weight predominantly from fat and muscle. That, that person looks very different. And they look different and the damage to their metabolism, which we talked about in another episode. Yeah. It, damage maybe isn't the right word, but the impact to their metabolism is mm-hmm. very different. So yeah. hence why when people stop taking it, they have such a rebound effect. So even the manufacturers say, like, if you stop taking it, 70% of people will regain weight. Yeah. Which is crazy. It is, it is crazy. And I think that's where that real like approach with caution needs to be said like we don't fully know the short and medium and long-term side effects um we we really don't and the fa- and if you're not willing if, like if you're like hey i've got a thousand dollars a month to spend for the rest of my life and i want to inject myself with a weight loss medication for the rest of my life like you you have to understand like that's the route that you're going down and if you can't do that you're just doing it for the quick fix to see results in three six months a year um you've just got to understand that you're just going to end up in that cycle or that loop forever. And that's going to become yeah. such a crutch. I think that's the thing is being able to zoom out because there is often, if you want to lose that amount of weight, it is for health reasons. Yeah. And if you do it in six months, great. And in the past we have talked about like, well, maybe that gives you the motivation to then start making healthier changes and to change your lifestyle because things feel easier. Like moving a slightly smaller body is easier. Yeah. If that's the case, then great. But know that you are going to probably find it difficult when you come off the medication to even maintain what you've lost, let alone continue losing. So I think when it was first blowing up and we were like, hey, actually, if this is a stepping stone for somebody and like get on the right path and and get some motivation, get some momentum, and then you can wean yourself off. Actually, the evidence that we're seeing now doesn't back up that that's going to be helpful in the long term. No. And not physiologically and, and certainly not psychologically as well. So it's, it is a concern because stuff like this doesn't go away. So this is going to be something weight loss medications are going to be something that are, are here to stay. Uh, there's no doubt about it just because we have an obesity epidemic in the UK and definitely in America. Yeah. Um, I mean, actually in America, the stats are mad. Um, I can't, I did write it down here. Yeah. 75% of the US population is either overweight or obese. Yeah. So you can see why these manufacturers are like, hmm, we've got quite a captive market here. What can we create? Yeah. Solve their problem, line our pockets. And keep the monthly. 75%. Keep the monthly reoccurring. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a big problem to solve. Hence, you know, people trying to solve it and there's a lot of money to be made, but you know, like it's coming with a pricey tag. Um, and by the way, like we're definitely not here saying like, we know what the answer is to fix the obesity epidemic because it's, it's a, it's a very complex problem and there's a multitude of issues that have to be addressed for that to happen. Um, I just, I just, it just worries me that like, I know like a lot of people, there are some people who need it and there's no doubt people who are listening or who take Ozempic or a weight loss medication and see success and are the anomaly. And I'm all for that, like great, you know what I mean? In more of a controlled uh, manner, maybe some accountability, you know, people telling you to resist and train and trying to build some healthy habits throughout it. You know, that can maybe be like a really, really successful for some people. But I, I would say that it's going to be like the anomalies and the, and, the, and a lot of people are going to take it and it's going to trap them. And it's it's going to really trap them in, in a lot of negative ways. Yeah, especially because it kind of takes the emphasis off all those other things which are health promoting. So definitely losing weight in itself does improve the risks of certain health issues. So you know, heart problems, diabetes, all of these things. But actually it's often the actions you're taking to lose weight, which also contribute. So if you're eating more whole foods, if you're being more active, if you're getting your steps in, if you're resistance training, Mm -hmm. all of these things of themselves promote health. If you're taking a shortcut, obviously there is still going to be a benefit because you've lost the weight, but you're, you're almost like short selling yourself on the health benefits of of the benefits yeah like it's so so much of like so for a lot of our clients when they'll sign up you know they're basically they've they've hit like a breaking point i would say for a lot of people um and in that moment they're using that pain as a driver to take action so like i don't feel good about myself or somebody said something or i've just hit enough is enough and they're using that initial pain and energy to as a catalyst for them to take action fantastic you know what i mean you you're taking someone that's probably quite negative and trying to create a positive outcome off the back of it 
However, we're very aware as coaches and as a team that that cannot be the the consistent driver for the rest of their lives because that's what we're, we're here to do. So very quickly in a space of a four to six week period, the client is moving a bit more, eating a little bit better, sleeping a bit better, managing the stress more, and they start to feel a hell of a lot better. And that why quickly turns from, I just want to keep feeling good. And it's not just because they're losing weight, it's because of all the other things that you just mentioned around that. So that's like, oh, there's a, like, I am actually happier. I actually, like, my dopamine's generally just in a better place. You just feel better. You feel good. You've got better digestion. You've got more energy. You sleep better. You smile more. You're happier. Um, and all of that is like, oh, why would I want this to stop? You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people look at some really healthy people and be like, oh, it just seems like loads of effort. It's like, for, for, for most people, it's like, the alternative is a lot worse. It's in that sense. And I think that's, like you're saying, you're almost short selling yourself of, of part of all these other benefits that come with with so much reward sorry to interrupt if you are enjoying this podcast we would ask you to go and hit the subscribe or the follow button as we are on a mission to grow this podcast to be as big as it can be and get some amazing guests on here to give you guys even more value because it's not just about what the number is on the scale no losing weight for so many of our clients is it's like that's the measure but what they actually want to achieve is to feel good be confident, have energy to like do whatever it is that they want to do in life. It's not about actually the number. When we really boil it down, that's just the label that we can put on it to identify what we're trying to do. Yeah, I, I, a huge one. Sometimes when I boil it down with clients, whether they are successful in other areas of lives, which a lot of them are, but maybe not with their bodies and weight, or just even if they haven't, a huge part of like conquering this is keeping your promises to yourself. Mm. And it's like, it's, it's, it's that constant, like I'll start on Monday or I'll start tomorrow or why did that happen? And just constantly feeling at war, at, like at, at war with yourself in terms of like, why can't I follow through? Why can't I follow through? And you just keep going through that. So when they get on the other side and it's like, I've been able to be consistent and be successful for a year. It's like, you've got this evidence behind you. Like, holy shit, like I can actually follow through with this. And that tends to transcend into other areas of your life in such a positive way. And my worry with weight loss medication is you might feel that high while you're losing the weight and taking the medication. But if you stop or if you're forced to stop and then that comes back on, you've instantly created a, a, a psychological crutch of like, I can't lose weight now because of a medication. And that war and battle never ends then for you. you. You've literally created a psychological crutch in your mind because it was it was the only thing that maybe worked for you. And, mm. and it's something that you can... And you it's know, not something you did to overcome and therefore you can like be proud and re-implement those yeah. mindsets. You just have to take the medication again. Yeah, which is... I get it from, a, from an easier standpoint, yeah. but it's... It's disempowering. Like it if is. you compare it to the hard work version, which we're not going to lie, it is hard work yeah. comparatively, but you actually get the same as any goal that you've worked for and you've worked hard. You get like that sense of pride and satisfaction and like, mm. I fucking earned that. Yeah. And a lot of the things that we're talking about, you know, and, and you always need to look for drivers and motives. You know, a lot of people will do more for themselves than they'll do for, for um will do more for other people than they'll do for themselves. Um, and if you've got kids and, and this is the situation that you're in, do you, do you want to instill healthy habits in you and then instill them in your kids? Or do you want your kids even seeing that you've taken a the easier route and then that's like what mom or dad done to get the results? And it's like, I know that can be like, you're pulling on a lot of heartstrings there and then that can be very call the for a lot of people, especially if you've struggled for so long, but there is another way. And I think that's just like, cause we know there is, and we do this every mm. single day and there's thousands of clients in the business. And this isn't like our sort of bread and butter. When we see something like this come up, come about, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just very difficult, especially knowing the, the ramifications that can come off the back of it. And we did actually do a post about this a little while ago, cause they have authorized some weight loss medication for kids now, haven't they? Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's just sort of a whole kettle of fish and it's a very... It is, but it ties into what you're saying there because if it's like, well, this is the answer to the problem and you start a child on this at eight. Yeah. Like, I mean, before we even go down the route of is that the right thing for them? Like, They don't even have informed consent at eight that you're signing them up to a, potentially a lifetime of this. Yeah. And it's it's tough. Is it, is it, is it, 
ignorance? Do people not know better? Are they not informed? Are they not educated? Is it a societal issue? Is it an environment issue? There's there's so many, you know, is it access to... There's also so much propaganda, though, almost, almost propaganda. I mean, yeah. it's not technically, but, you know, all of the publication from mm -hmm. the manufacturers and in the media kind of plays down this bit that we're talking about, which why I really wanted to do this episode, because... It's all about the here and now, and it's not thinking long term. It's not, and and you know, especially like everyone's been in the twenties and teenagers. You're just like, ah, sod it, my knees will be fine when I'm all there. Or you just you just don't care. <laughs> I've literally got a friend, right? He was like, lived yeah. a wild life, um, and he's like, I don't care. I'll be dead when I'm forty. Mm. He's thirty nine. I'm like, <laughs> Robbo, is that is that still the vibe? He's like. No. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it is, you know, everyone's got that like YOLO fuck it mentality in them to an extent. But again, it's it's those unintended consequences. And with, you know, with parts of your health and stuff, it's it's just like, you know, for us, we, we just want everyone to have the best quality of life that they can and to, to, to feel the best and, and to get, have take ownership of your health and grab the bull by the horns really does allow that to happen. Um, and it, and it, 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 you want it to be challenging. You want to go through adversity. You want to build some of those muscles around those tougher situations it, it transcends into other areas of your, of your life even that sense of like taking a weight loss medication and seeing success you, there is probably a part where people do feel like they've they've cheated themselves and it's um i think we have to like just acknowledge though what you're saying you know you want to do the hard things actually many people that are struggling with this already feel like they're doing enough hard things yeah and so and that that's like that's heartbreaking breaking for me anytime we yeah. speak to these women to hair because it's you you know there's another way in essence yeah and so when you say yeah but doing hard things is good if you've if you've been doing hard things and that hasn't paid off for you you can totally understand how that leads to a point of going do you know what i've tried the proper way in inverted commas mm. the hard things don't work for me yeah so screw it i just yeah. need to get a result yeah it's it's tough i i can get that mentality and that behavior you know you mean like enough to enough like I, the, the the tip when the typical uh, typical clients that come on for us have not just struggled for years; it's often decades, mm -hmm. and they've struggled with their weight or health for that whole length of time. I read a review out on uh, Instagram stories the other day. The next, I was so proud of this woman's re review, and she said she literally had struggled since elementary school with her weight. And it's she, super common. People say like, "I went yeah. on my first diet at 14. Yeah, and she now said, "I'm in my fifties, and I started at the busiest time of my life." But I'm so happy that I did it. And here I am a year later still sustaining and maintaining my results. But like, I, if she started at 50 and she'd been struggling since 14, that's 36 years of just like, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. I'm trying. I'm trying. Like, I, we get it. Like, it's just my concern with this is, and why I wanted to say about the Cobra paradox as well and stuff is, it's just the unintended consequences, right? That lady found that answer at 50. Amazing. For some other women we've coached, it's been 60. I think we even had, who was the lady who was in their 70s? Uh, Kelly, Kelly Grayhair. And she said, oh, I'm going into my 70s next year and I'm, oh, this is going to be the best decade of my life. Yeah. And it was happy as that word was for me to watch and see for one of the video testimonials that we had. It was also really heartbreaking that it's taken this woman till 70 to get to that point, but at least she got there. And I think with more of the right information coming out and the, the way we're always trying to cut the BS, it's, it's just trying to give people more better information the right information to make more informed decisions because something like this you know there's already enough crutches that people have and i just wouldn't want someone to get another one that's also extremely expensive yeah that's just what yeah just <laughs> that one um but the thing is i mean this wasn't even supposed to be like a bashing as epic episode i got all these pros and cons oh, down okay. <laughs> but you know what when we actually talk about it yeah th there might be the same number of pros on the list mm. but actually the weight of the cons kind of shifts the balance in yeah. my opinion and i like we've said the psychology of it makes so much sense but if you can think about that long term and even just the short term like the studies that have been done show like the official studies say 50 percent of people 48 percent of people will experience side effects but other studies show that even after 68 weeks so over a year 90 percent of people had side effects and what do they, do you know what they include as well? Yeah, all? so fatigue, um, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. But like living with that, you know, if you think, oh, it's two weeks whilst my body settles into it, you could probably just suck it up and get on with it. Mm. 
that to continue 90% of people to have that. Which is what the medication actually advises that you stay on this for the rest of your life. Right. So it's basically like you're going to take a medication, you're going to lose some weight, but then you're going to get horrendous side effects, almost guaranteed a year later. Yeah. And it's just like, versus like what we would say is like, hey. You just feel better and better and better yeah, and better. You just continue to feel better. So like the other approach is, hey, and by the way, that's a year, you know, so like if we were to take the same approach and be like, hey, I'm going to, as we always say, the philosophy of getting 1% better every day, which is just making small incremental changes over, you know, every single day, but over a couple of weeks, couple of months and a year, you make tremendous change. In a year's time, you don't start getting sad. The side effects you get are more energy, better digestion. You feel happier. You feel more at peace with yourself. You feel more content. You have more energy. You have more muscle. Like that, they're, they're the side effects of, of, of what we're talking about, which, you know, when you line them up in terms of pros or cons, it's huge. It, mm. it is huge. Um, but again, it comes with a little bit more effort. It comes with a little bit more work. It's not just about, you know, injecting yourself in the stomach a couple of times a week. Yeah. And I think it would be really interesting to hear from any listeners who have tried it, because obviously it's all very scandalous to share the side effects and, and all of that. But actually, there's probably people quietly in the background who've had a positive experience. Yeah. It would be really interesting to hear if there is anyone listening. Yeah. I you know, there's always going to be outliers and there are going to be some people that have found real success with this mm -hmm. and come off and being able to maintain it. And that's great. And I think that's sometimes where the the hope can kind of come from this too. But equally, it's, um, like I said, it's just approach with caution. Yeah, because uh, like, we don't like to be dogmatic and say like, this is wrong. No. There is always a purpose for anything, mm -hmm. like one part of the population. Um, but like you say, going into it informed, knowing the balance of pros and cons and how that applies to your life is so important. It's so important. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, like, and this is always the case when a lot of people take a lot of medications, there will be side effects and there will be some horrendous side effects. So, uh, Cy might be able to get this up actually. So there was a really successful weight loss drug. I think it was back in the eighties or nineties and it did work. Um, it used to just like melt the fat off people. Um, and I don't actually know the name. I think it maybe something to do with brown fat and stuff, Sai, if you want to have a look. But basically, you had to take it in certain dosages and it basically warmed up your core temperature is, is I oh, think, the okay. premise of it. So people were burning more calories because they were just basically hotter. Their body was having right. to work harder to cool them down. However, then what do you think people do when they found a weight loss medication um, that they can take in a sort of tablet form? And it works. Overdosed. Took too much. Yeah. yeah. And then people literally started dying from it. And that's what happened. Like the, the medication started to get abused and people got, people died. And then basically it just got taken off the market. Um, I don't know if uh, Sam is, yeah, he's having a, a good look still. But. but there's always been something like, I remember <clears throat> um, probably about 10 years ago, a colleague I worked with, she was taking something and it, I, I don't even know how it worked, but it did something to like the way your body processed fats. So right. you would just mm. poop out the fats. <laughs> and like, no joke, she just like pooped out oil. Right. Like, that, yeah. and there's always something. And you just think, well, is that what you want to be doing for undefined amount of time? Yeah. I mean, it, again, unintended consequences and, yeah. and what comes of it. Uh, I don't even know how you pronounce that word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess at fenfluramine. Fenfluramine was marketed by the American home products, later known as... YF. YF. Uh, <laughs> as what? Pondium? Pondamin. So, pond so like the actual name of the yeah. medication was probably Pondamin. Okay, but was shown to cause potentially fatal... Right, you just read this. So <laughs> just, this is not my So basically, shit. the medication was Pondamin, um, but it had effective issues with hypertension and heart valve problems. So it wasn't even just about the overdose, it was that it actually wasn't safe, it caused heart problems. Um, hence why it was removed in 1997. So this is again though, one of those examples where it sounds great, but the research hasn't been around for long enough to understand the yeah. long-term implications. Mm -hmm. um, and same with these medications, they have been used for diabetes for a long time, but this is what we're saying about using medications off-label they've been used in a lower dosage for diabetes the main objective was to manage blood sugar which it does effectively yeah not to lose weight yeah and the person who's taking it to manage their blood sugar is probably going to have to take it for the rest of their life because that's the way that we manage diabetes currently mm -hmm. so it's a completely different conversation it's a completely different conversation and again it's yeah, you know, do you what really want to be like that? What drug got withdrawn, and there was thirteen billion dollars of you know legal cases off the back of it. You know, is there a chance something like this happens in a couple of years as well, and you're one of those people that's now 
a part of a study or part of a data mm. standpoint um it's like yeah that's just not what we want to see um and there's also uh, an Australian woman lately that has... Oh, yeah, you showed me this the other day. Yeah, so there was an Australian woman who has recently died after, after taking uh, Ozempic. Um, again, we might be able to find the exact story because we've got Mr. Simon over here. Uh, but, you know, same thing. She was having some of those symptoms, which were like nausea and not feeling great. And her husband's been interviewed afterwards. And, you know, I think he just got up on one and there was something coming out of her mouth and she'd passed away. And it was because of yeah. uh, the drug. And again, like... <laughs> This is the case. Anytime any new pharmaceutical drug comes out, there will be outliers and very, they, they expect it to an extent. There will be so, some people who have really adverse side effects. But again, th that is the, always the risk when you take a medication, especially if you're going to take a medication like regularly forever. Mm -hmm. And it's not even necessary. Like I know it sounds like we're really using this as a, as a push for coaching, but that's not the point. The point is you can achieve better results even without taking any medication, spending any money, like literally just making a few lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take these risks. You don't have to spend this money. You you don't, you really don't. And you know, like we've had, we get messages all the time on Instagram saying, hey, I've been following your page for a year and I've lost 40 pounds and I feel amazing. And you know, so many of these things and I've, I've I kicked my inner bitch in the ass now and I cut the BS with myself. And you know, it's really amazing to see some of these people who've just taken literally free information and been able to apply it practically to their lives. But then some people, listen to that and be like, I just haven't been able to be successful with that. And I think that's really where coaching comes in because you get the high levels of accountability following a proven method that, that walks you through this. So eventually you become accountable to yourself. Like our goal with all our clients is never to coach you forever. It is to give you enough evidence to say that you can be consistent on your own. And then over time, we dial back the accountability so you eventually just realize, hey, I can do this. Um, and it's everything we speak about on this podcast. And it's just, again, about taking those small incremental steps forward over a long, a long enough period of time. And then you realize, and like, oh, I can do this. I can do this instead of I can't, which is the evidence that a lot of people have got 10, 20 years of no, just failure. So you, it's, that's, um, so I've done, I've done plenty of sales calls this year and breakthrough calls with lots of, of clients. And uh, I'll ask them at the end, like, how confident do you feel like you, you know, we can get you results. And if they don't say 10, it's often because out of, 10. out of 10, they don't say 10 out of 10 that we can get them results. Um, it's often not that I've not uh, shown them how great our product is. Uh, it's 90% of the time, 99% of the time that, that they don't have belief that this time will be different. And and I can completely empathize and get that because they've the only evidence they've got is 20 years of them not being successful. So why is this time going to be different? And that's always the part of making sure that you go and work. You know, like you could be listening to this and not basically be who... Um, you, you know, we, we, we help women of, of all demographics and sort of ages and, and, and issues that have been going on. But like, if you're looking for a coach, the best way to see if that coach or that company can actually get you results is to see if the testimonials and clients they've got are of people that sound, look and feel exactly like you. And if you can see that, that and they've been able to repeatedly do that for years, that's often a very good sign that that coach or that coaching program um, is able to solve your specific problems because they are doing it on a day-to-day -day basis with hundreds or thousands of people. Yeah, that's really good advice because every person has different needs and requirements. But if you can find somebody who gets you, that's yeah. the magic. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like if you go and see our testimonials, you will see predominantly women between the ages of like 25 and 65, you know, who are trying to lose weight um, versus like, you know, if you're like a guy listening who wants to, you know, put on a, lose 50 pounds and put some muscle on. It's not to say that we couldn't help you, but it probably make more sense to go and see another coach yeah. who helps guys do exactly what you're looking for. And mm -hmm. you can read their stories and be like, oh, that does sound like me. Oh, they've got the same issues as me. It just makes sense. And it's, again, it's doing your due diligence. A lot of people sign up to um, programs or coaches or trainers and, and they just, it's your health, you know, like you, you, you really do want to take it serious and do a little bit of your homework. And I'd even flex this a little bit further and say like, is it white lab or white coat syndrome or whatever it is? Like people just go to the doctors and it's like, well, the doctor said this. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, this is a prime example. This whole this is a prime example. weight loss medication, especially yeah. in a private medical system like America where the doctors are- Financially in, benefiting. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I, that's, that's a, a huge one, isn't it? You go in, well, the doctor said this, so I've got to do that. And it's like, okay, well, this is your health. Like, are we not going to question this? It's like once or twice, we're getting a second opinion. And it's like, hey, is that doctor making a considerable penny every time he signs mm -hmm. up another person to a weight loss medication or whatever else? So I think it's your, your, 
your health, you only get one body. You know what I mean? We're here for such a short space of time. Um, everyone wants to have the, the best quality of life that they can. When you just get an advice, like question it. Uh, you know, for us, we will ask anyone to question why we do what we do or why we say what we do. We actually want to explain it as logical as possible and as in layman's terms as possible. So it makes sense. And if you said it to someone else, you wouldn't you, that, that would not make yeah, sense. Yeah, and we'd never say, oh, you have to do this thing just when, because. Because we're not. Because yeah, I said so. Yeah, because I said so. We wouldn't, like, our job is to educate and explain. We're not dogmatic. We understand that different th things work for different people. And that's it. Like, when you just go and see a doctor or see a certain professional, and they say, this is what you have to do because, or just, this is what you just should do, or there's a medication to take. Again, it's approach with caution. Mm -hmm. Question, do you do due diligence? If I can say that properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in summary, there, there obviously are a segment of the population that would benefit from this drug. But I guess rather than a balanced pros and cons episode, it's been more of a please don't do this unless you really, really have to episode. Yeah, I, I really do believe that's, that's what it should go because... The, there is another way and yes it's going to be harder and people don't want to hear that but it's it's it'll just enrich your life in so many different ways thanks for listening we hope you've enjoyed the episode and if what we have been saying has made a lot of sense to you and you are ready to connect the dots with your health fitness and nutrition then why not check out our body smart coaching if you go over to the description and click the link you'll find out everything you need to know and be able to apply there